Hey everyone, this is a very quick video, hopefully, about calibration of our tubular key cutter that we have on the website that I don't mention. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, I'll link some other videos down below. I'm very proud of this design, uh, seven or eight pin cutting, really designed to be easy to use, pocket, compactable, built-in key measuring gauge. It's one of our standard, you know, 3D printed pieces, but it also, I, th I think it's kind of the neatest thing, it comes with multiple cutting shafts. So these shafts are replaceable. You get in there with a little bit of a set screw adjustment. You can go ahead and pull that out, swap it out for a new fresh one or whatever you want to do with different cutting sizes. But if you do that, if you uh, move this around, well, how do you re-zero the situation? There's a couple ways to do it. One is kind of quick and dirty, and then the best way is to double check your work with a gauge that we now will be including in all of our kits. A pre-cut, uh, very precisely measured key with the depths of one, three, five, and seven. I uh, know it is not one, three, three, seven, it's one, three, five, seven. Essentially, what do we got going on here? Let's say you've cranked your adjustment setting down as deep as it goes. Usually that's gonna be near some zero position. Well, that's obviously not a true zero position because we're, we're way too compact. Normally to get a true zero, you'd bring this all the way back around once. So now we're expanded all the way out, right? This is, this is very far out. Now, you know, zero is still a cut. It is a very small cut, but it's a cut. So if this shaft were protruding through up to the cutter surface, it would be just barely, barely proud of the surface. It would still be sticking through to make cuts. What is fully flat with the surface? One more click. It's a phantom non-existent position, right? But if you do that, you are now zeroed out. You are, you are fully, fully flat. So if you had any flat surface at all, right? You could just push it, make it, make it flat. That would be correct. If I have this shaft on the handle, let's do that again. Let's go ahead and, and push it a little beyond the position, right, sticking out. Let's just press it down, literally just swipe across fully flat, okay? If I lock that down with our set screw there, that probably is pretty good. It means that if we turn this to the actual zero mark, well, we are just barely sticking through and we would be making cuts right there. But how do we verify it? Well, let's go ahead and try it on different positions. Position of one, if we go ahead and put our key, now again, this is a seven position cut key. You can see the positions are boom, 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 boom. So we would need to be in the seven position marker here. But let's bring this around to the first position. All right, this should be a cut of one. And if I pop through and nestle it down, you can see I am not actually removing any metal. That is a correct one cut. Well. Let's pull this down and move this over to the depth of three. Let's test and see if three is a correct position. So yes, on this key, going around clockwise, looking at it, we have a cut of one, three, five, and seven. So back on here, if we wanna test, we've tested the one depth, let's test the three depth. We're dialed to three down here, push up and through, wiggle it around so it nestles in. How does that look to you? That should be right up against the key, no problem. We move our shaft down if we want to move it. Now at this point, it's just getting academic. Let's move it over to the five. Let's dial to a depth of five, push it up. We've got to nestle it around the brass so it'll snug in. Are we actually removing metal from that key? No, I can feel this is completely smooth operation. No problem at all, no cutting. And just to round it out, why not? Let's check a depth of seven. Nestle down. That looks Pretty good. Now, if you ever did something accidentally wrong and you weren't adjusted and you started carving up and cutting your gauge key, uh, we, we will make these available separately, I guess. But, um, you know, that's why we do have the built-in gauge on the handle. Is this a seven? Seven looks good. Is this a five? Five looks good, et cetera, et cetera. Once you've gauged it out, you're pretty happy with that. You can put the hat back on, you can lock everything down, and you are good to go. So that's about all there is to it. Pocket tubular key cutter, uh, available on the website that I don't mention. Someone will put it in the comments, I'm sure, but no, truthfully, I mean, I really am proud of this creation. Out of all the different ways you can make and originate, you know, tubular keys by code in the field, like you got, you got the HPC Scotsman back there if you want a whole benchtop version, but to have something in your pocket, in your field kit, I really do like this, and I'm really happy that a lot of you like it too. Hope this has been helpful. Stay safe out there.